We wanna touch base with what's going on in Gaza, understanding that according to authorities, the death toll there has now passed 23,000, which is, it's in the territory now of it's impossible to actually imagine. There's just so many people in such a short period of time, the level of destruction, the amount of suffering that it is hard to actually take stock of. Now that said, with all of the pain that's already been inflicted on Gaza, the long-term plan for the people of Gaza seems to be taking shape. And this is really something. Um, Israeli Communications Minister Shlomo Karhi said, quote, we certainly need to encourage emigration from Gaza. Basically, people need to move out. Uh, and that makes it seem as if it would be voluntary. Um, but we wanna give you some more details. Uh, he was being interviewed and uh, was asked how the Israeli government would accomplish that. Here is what the Israeli Communications Minister said. The war does what it does, he was asked by the interviewer. Does that mean that Israel would quote, continue to pressure them with force, with hunger and with difficult conditions? To which the communications minister said, we're pressuring Hamas into a corner right now, not with difficult conditions. We do give humanitarian support to the uninvolved, which is something you can say. I don't know how many of the uninvolved would consider uh, that they were not being targeted, that they were being aided. Who is uninvolved in Gaza right now? Who is allowed to be uninvolved? If you're in refugee settlements, you're not uninvolved. You could be bombed at any moment. So this is just such an amazing set of things to to have like a representative of the government who specifically is in the area of communications to say, Jordan, I wanted your thoughts on this because there's been a lot of this floating, like both from official channels and behind the scenes of, you know, it really would be nice if a bunch of people just decided to move out and never return. Yeah, you can see that in his comments too. The war does what it does. They're saying they're doing this, essentially, they're saying they're doing this with force. We're making their lives so miserable. We've destroyed so much of their homes, their businesses, their utilities, their infrastructure. They'll have no choice but to leave. But then we're not holding them at gunpoint and forcing them to leave. It's voluntary. Isn't that magic? What they're doing is ethnic cleansing. They want to take that territory. They want to claim it as their own. You already see people fantasizing about building a Disneyland there. They want to do water parks and real estate and just convert all of that land into more Israel. It's ethnic cleansing. And if you want to talk about securing Israel, creating a safe haven for everybody, for Palestinians, for Jews, for Israelis, everyone who lives there, this is not the way. But Netanyahu's far right regime has made it clear they don't care. They want this, they want ethnic cleansing, they wanna take that land. And for all these people who just kind of throw their hands up and say, well, look, I'm no Netanyahu fan, but you know, we gotta, we gotta deal with Hamas. Well, then actually oppose what Netanyahu is doing. If you are no Netanyahu fan, why are you just accepting his strategy, his approach, his government's approach here? This is extreme to say the least. You have some people maybe getting around to criticizing forced migration or voluntary migration. Again, this is ethnic cleansing, this is displacement. And they're doing this through their military campaign. That's what's creating it, they're acknowledging that. So. I can't I can't accept this like, oh well, I'm no no fan of Netanyahu, but you know, we gotta deal with this. No, you you have to criticize what he's doing because this is the outcome. Yeah, but both in general, but then also like we saw week by week, it appeared that based on what areas were being targeted and where people were being told to go, that people were being herded by the bombing. They're being told, oh, just go a little bit farther south, you'll be safe there. And then that place gets bombed. Oh, go a little bit further south. And then, oh, what do you know? Most of the most of Gaza is destroyed. You know, maybe there's some other place you can go. Like it is just, it is so out there in the open. And and it's not just this communications minister who is saying that. We had previously had statements by the finance minister who had said that Israelis would replace the Palestinians and they would make the desert bloom. Um, the heritage minister had called for Israel to fully occupy Gaza and reestablish settlements there. Now, that said, there are so many representatives of the government, both current and former, who are saying things like this, that Netanyahu apparently feels like he needs to at least claim the opposite. So to be fair, we're gonna play video of him making a different claim. So let's go to that. 
Israel has no intention of permanently occupying Gaza or displacing its civilian population. Our goal is to rid Gaza of Hamas terrorists and free our hostages. Once this is achieved, Gaza can be demilitarized and de-radicalized, thereby creating a possibility for a better future for Israel and Palestinians alike. Okay, so he is claiming, no, we are not going to be permanently resettling. We are, we are just trying to weed out Hamas and all that. And again, uh, there's no better articulation of exactly how you do that. What exactly the state is that you're aiming for where you will feel confident that there's no more Hamas. So theoretically, no one will have been radicalized by this absolutely insane campaign that you've been waging. Um, just the claim that we're we're gonna get there. We're just gonna weed out Hamas, and that's gonna be fine. And by the way, Jordan, before you you give your thoughts, um, a representative for Hamas, for Hamas has recently put out a statement saying that uh, the enemy prisoners, so the hostages, will not be returned alive to their families unless a series of conditions uh, will be set, including the comprehensive cessation of the aggression against Gaza. So uh, Netanyahu seems like you know, like. All cannons blazing, we're gonna keep going until we've wiped out all of Hamas, whatever that means. And Hamas is saying we're not going to give up the prisoners unless the war completely ends. So it looks like we're facing months more of what we have been and that Gaza, you know, the 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 people of Gaza, 23,000 who've already died, that number is almost certainly set to rise. What do you think? Yeah, and if you wanna protect and save the lives of those hostages, the ceasefire is the way to do that. We saw that when we had a temporary ceasefire, you saw the release of hostages. That's great, we should release them on both sides. And that's the way you can ensure that happens. But Israel doesn't really care. They've made it clear through their actions, through their rhetoric, that the hostages are really secondary to their ultimate mission, which is eradicating Hamas. But as we've seen with these types of campaigns that the US have waged, has waged over the past couple of decades, you're not going to really root out these terror groups. Like they'll just, your, your actions are only going to inspire more people to enlist, to join them. You're only going to inspire more actions with war. It's a cycle of violence. You need to think holistically, you need to think about any sort of diplomatic approach. And that would include talking about a ceasefire. But when you have the US blocking resolutions at the UN, on behalf of Israel for humanitarian aid or temporary reprieves, all they're doing is putting these hostages in harm's way. So if you really cared, if anybody really cared, your number one thing you'd be pushing for would be a ceasefire. And instead, you know, we've got Biden and uh, you know his approach, and also the knowledge that you know this war is almost certainly going to stretch on. So for now, we've got Biden, and he's been receiving pressure from from the very beginning to change the strategy of the way he communicates around this, and certainly the government policy. And we know that if Trump gets in, I mean, God only knows what will happen uh, then. And so in both cases. The, the Israeli government, the Israeli military strategy seems to be getting the go ahead to continue. And um, you know, we're trying to convince people of why that is obviously unacceptable. But understand that there is a significant portion of the American population that would be perfectly fine with the entire population of Gaza just being swept into the sea. And you know, a suburb of Tel Aviv being set up there, they would be perfectly fine with that. And so like Netanyahu says what he says, and that's good, we, we played it, you know? And if it turns out not to be true, and they just annex large sections and send in settlements, what is he gonna be sued over it? Like, oh no, the International Criminal Court's really gonna get him. Like, what is it? It's not gonna matter at that point. There are already so many people who will never be able to return to their homes, that will never be able to return to the lives they have. The only question is, will anyone in the end? And it's not looking good. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.